Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with my beautiful daughter Chloe Ligar, and today we are going to be continuing our topic on the hindrances to prayer. Today's topic is domestic problems. But before we do anything, Chloe Ligar, what do I need to do before I do any teaching on prayer? You should pray. I should pray, and especially about this topic today. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, I'm a single man, Lord, and I'm going to be teaching on marriage problems. Okay. So, Father, I definitely need the Holy Spirit to fill me and to really help me deal with a topic, Lord, that I really shouldn't be talking about, but it's come up, so here we are. So, use this time, Lord, to draw people to yourself. It's in Jesus' name, and everybody said... Amen. Amen. All right. So, let's have a look-see at this drawing, which is <laughs> kind of jacked up, but here we go. In First Peter, oops... 3 7 it says likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered all right, so this guy is obviously abusing his wife with his words because a uh, fist isn't literally coming out of his mouth. But as I was saying, you can kill somebody with your words. So we have to be so careful how we communicate to each other. And here in Malachi 2, 13 through 14, it says, And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Again, Malachi 2, 13-14. So here we go. All right. So I am a single man and I've chosen to remain so because the option of marriage for me is just too risky for me and I don't want to risk it. So I'm able to say, you know what? I'm not gonna go down that route and I've chosen to be single and I'm very very happy doing that but if you want to hear my advice on what I think on who should be married and who stands a chance because I know pastors that have gotten divorced and it's like wow and I always thought in my heart look if they can't make it what you know what chance do I got so again I'm gonna go through a list of my opinion and you can take it or you can leave it so again you know Paul even said this I speak as a man this is not a commandment of the Lord and that's pretty much what I'm doing now so, I only have hope for born-again Christians between the ages of 16 and 30 who are both virgins, serving together in a church, not just attending. Once married, you stay faithful because divorce is not an option. So, let's look at what God says here. 
Okay, in Genesis 2.23, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay, so again, marriage is between one man and one woman. And the Bible says, What God has joined together, let not man put asunder. So, again, uh, if people say, well, homosexuals should be able to be married, marriage is a covenant between them and God. God will never sanctify and bless a marriage that is not a man and a woman. So, you may say on a piece of paper, we're married, but if you're not a man and a woman, God doesn't honor it. He doesn't recognize it. So you're having a nice piece of paper that says something, but in the eyes of God, he ain't going for it. So let's continue. Now in Genesis 3, in verse 16, it says, Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hath eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt thou return. Alright, so now I'm going to say something that a lot of people are going to disagree with me on, and that's fine. Let me get a quick swig here. But, the man goes to work to support his family. The wife stays home. She cooks, she cleans, and she has babies. Now, my advice is to wait a year or two to have kids. Get to know each other in your relationship for a while. Enjoy each other have your fun, and then start the family. Now you're going to say to me, but that's so old-fashioned. I think a wife should also go to work. Now notice the curse. The curse is on the woman. I will greatly multiply your pain and childbearing. The curse on the man is you got to go to work, and work is going to be hard for you. Now, the woman that chooses to go to work, she's adding an extra curse on herself. <laughs> it's like, no, if you want to be happy, stay home, cook, clean, take care of your house, and raise children. Again, I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for this one. I can, I can already see it now. All right. Now, another thing that I think you should do is go to a gym. Both of you, the husband and the wife, get a gym membership and go to the gym together. The reason is that most people 
that don't go to the gym, their relationships don't work out. Get the joke there. But the thing is, see, when you first were dating each other, you wanted to look good. You, you know, put on a nice shirt, you put on cologne, and she put on perfume, makeup, and you wanted to be attractive for the person you were with. And for some strange reason, people think, well, now that we're married, I can just let myself go. Now, there's a joke. How do you turn a fox into a cow? You marry them. Now, again, that goes for both the husband and the wife. You know, why are you going to suddenly put on a whole bunch of pounds? Because as a man, we are visual creatures. If you don't take care of yourself, let's say you're packing on the pounds, you chop your hair off, you're wearing sweats, I'm going to go, this is not what I signed up for. You know, when we first got together, she looked good. And she's saying... When we first got married, he looked good, but now, you know, you're just not taking care of yourself. And that's not very fair. That's called bait and switch. You know, at first you show the best of you, and then after you're married, you're like, eh, you just gotta love me the way I am. That's not nice. That's not fair. Okay, something you should never do is use sex or nagging to manipulate your husband. He will resent you for it. Again, arguments, guys, nagging. There's a better way to get your point across. If you're always harping on him, he's going to say, will you shut up? And he's just going to tune you out. And that's just going to make your frustration even worse. So please... And uh, ladies, if you say, well, if you don't do this, you're not going to get any. Guess what? He won't get any from you. But believe me, Satan's got plenty of girls out there who are willing to give it up to him. So you want to destroy your marriage? Withhold sex from your husband. Don't do it. Okay, another thing. Never use profanity or raise your voice to one another. No violence. Again, never use profanity. Never call her a B word. And never, ladies, when you talk about your husband, never roll your eyes like, oh, he's such a blah, blah. And you're like spewing all this vomit in the ears of your friends saying, oh, my husband, uh, and <sighs> you want to honor your husband. Treat him like a king and guaranteed he will treat you like a queen. So, okay, and never go to bed angry. Again, if you guys have an argument, you never raise your voice, never use profanity, you talk it out. And you try to do it before you go to bed. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Now, I'm going to tell you why I would, if I was an unsaved man, why I would never get married. Now, here's some reasons. Why I don't recommend marriage if you're not a believer, the risk is too high because women want a career and they go to college and they rack up all this student debt. Now, when I was young, women started sleeping around when they were 13. So between the ages of 13 and 30, she'll rack up a body count in the triple digits. That means she slept with more than a hundred people. Then, after she's been ran through by all the alpha bad boys, after 30, she'll expect a beta soy boy to come along and pay full market value after she's been used up. All her good years are gone, and now she wants to marry you. She'll say, I've had my fun. But now I'm looking to settle down and have a serious relationship. After she's had that many lovers, she can't pair bond, pair bond with you. So also, stay away from single mothers. 
because you'll have to deal with baby daddies and the drama of kids looking at you where you're trying to do your best to get, you know, to be a father to them and they'll look at you, you're not my father. And it's like, who needs that headache? So again, as a unsaved man, again, this is me speaking as an unsaved man saying, look, if I had the choice, I would not date a single mother. And they'll try to get pregnant by you, and that's 18 years of child support. Now again, if you look at this, the risk is too high, because all she has to do is say, I'm not happy, wham. And no fault divorce, you can lose half your stuff. And in California, if you're married for more than 10 years, you'll have to pay her vagina money for the rest of her life. Family court is against men. Child support payments that will have you living in your car and you might not even get visitation rights. Now, a comedian that everybody knows, Robin William, kicked his air addiction through suicide. And in my opinion, it was because of the stress of having to maintain a level of alimony to multiple ex-wives every month, which he couldn't do in his later years. Because the courts, at the height of his career, saw he was making millions. So they said, well, you got to pay this amount, maintain this every month, for the rest of her life. And in his later years, he was like on a sitcom. They don't pay that much on a sitcom. So again, he kicked his air addiction. So that is one of the many reasons, guys, as an unsaved man, I would say, I will never, ever, ever get married. But as a Christian, I've chosen to go the route of Paul where he's like, look, if you're able to control your sexual appetite and say, you know what, I don't need it. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve God. And let's see what Paul had to say on that matter. Okay. Here in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 6, it says, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God. Still done. Turn. One after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. So again, Paul is saying, look, if you need sex that bad, find yourself a wife, but good luck. Again, I know pastors, they couldn't even make it work. So again, with me, I've just chosen, I'm not going to even go that route. But if you are married, brother, sister, get on your knees and beg God, God help us in our marriage. Because again, Satan is going to do everything he can to destroy it. And if you guys are constantly fighting and you're trying to pray, God doesn't want to hear it until you guys are reconciled. So again, domestic problems in your marriage will be a hindrance to your prayer. So again, by God's grace, just seek his face and pray and say, God help. Because <laughs> especially in today's age, with all the technology we have on our phones, it's so easy for husbands and wives to keep in touch with their exes. They all are like, oh, look who found me on Facebook. 
my old childhood sweetheart. Oh, I better not let my wife see that or I better not let my husband see that. And again, you know, Satan has all these tricks that he has that he can destroy your marriage. So, again, guys, take this Bible study for what it's worth. This was definitely a difficult one for me. You know, I feel like a blind man trying to teach an art in, or a class in art on how to mix your colors. It's like, I'm blind. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I'm a single guy trying to give relationship advice. So, again, take it for what it's worth. Hopefully, I didn't offend too many of you. This is Jason Ligar. With Chloe Ligar coming to you live from the Man Cave. Join us next time as we do more studying on hindrances to prayer. God bless you and have a great day.